Copenhagen, a beautiful city that is full of life and design everywhere you look. It's hard to find a flower in such a physically breathtaking city. That was the challenging part, finding a need in such a well-designed and already flourishing place. Many hours of brainstorming began. We scouted different sites, we considered what felt like every idea possible, and we thought what makes a certain spot unique from any other spot. So we decided to interview the locals. We discovered that 24 out of 30 people like to hang out in the park right beside the cemetery. So we went back to the drawing board and really tried to research and find out all we could about this interesting place. It turns out it's not just an ordinary graveyard. The graves are famous Danish citizens who have done remarkable things and have had much success in their lives. This is where the idea was born. Our goal is to raise awareness about these remarkable Danish people who have contributed to Copenhagen in a way that should be respected and admired for years to come. But how should we do this? By bringing the dead back to life. The idea is to have interactive festivals at the cemetery throughout the year. This will be a way to connect the living citizens of all ages and also shifting the existing perspective of death to a new and positive way. The first installation will focus on inspiring and famous musicians from Copenhagen's past. This installation will have sounds and holograms of the musician in order to bring his historical music back to life. You can also connect your smartphones. For example, if you're close to the grave of Ben Webster, you can listen to his music on your phone. Another topic will be poetry. This month will consist of many interactive installations that allow you to put yourself in the famous Danish fairy tale by Hans Andersson. For the philosophy theme, there will be an interactive space that will translate the philosophical theories of Sir Kierkegaard, which states that everybody has their own subjective experience. This will be done by people individually stepping into a room with zero light and zero sound to experience their own subjectivity. There will also be a program to learn for giving people information about the festival and be used for different events throughout the year, such as concerts, teachings, workshops, and so on. Overall, these interactive installations will create an entirely new space for people to enjoy while at the same time educating people on the history of Copenhagen's past. We also have a website where people can find out more information about the events as well as giving a chance for schools to organize events to educate and discover their past while being entertained. Hey, after finding out that the cemetery is a place where most people go and hang out, we chose cemetery as our site and wanted to create a space that will change the way you look at a cemetery. We have designed inter several interactive exhibitions happening throughout the year to create a new space for people to be entertained and educated on the history of Copenhagen and give a sense of belonging and pride. To make it more <coughs> inviting, we took the walls of the cemetery up. We also designed a permanent pavilion to give info about the events and this pavilion can be used to bring the most diverse community in co co the most diverse community in Copenhagen with different programs such as workshops, teachings for schools, seniors, and so on. So basically, this is what it's going to look like. And uh, our first four themes, and that may evolve in the future, depending on how people uh, adapt to that and how they, are, they, they like the idea. Uh, the first time would be music, and we are thinking of doing it with the Copenhagen Jazz Festival to have, uh, and to each of our events kind of piggyback on an already existing uh, organization of festival to, have, uh, to, to get funding on one hand and get communication and promotion on the other hand. So poetry, there are some poetry festivals and physics we can collaborate with the Niels Bohr Institute. We are not sure yet for philosophy, there are small initiatives but nothing really big at the moment. So we're still thinking about that. Um, for the music um, part of it, we could uh, focus on musicians such as uh, Ben Webster, which is a really interesting one, because he's an American that came to Copenhagen to play jazz. And uh, we believe that uh, it's as well 
it conveyed the idea of uh, a certain type of city for Copenhagen, so black American musician come here to find an understanding and uh, an open, uh, like a certain type of uh, open-mindedness. So we would have a yeah, decent installation with like music, holograms, and uh, interactive other things. We were thinking as well about using new technologies such as uh, audio augmented reality. So you probably know visual augmented reality, which is when you use your cell phone to see Pokemon in the streets. You just add a layer of virtual, of virtual images on the images that are already existing. And audio, audio augmented reality is the same thing, but with audio. So you're, you're hearing just as you, were, or you, you should be hearing, but on top of that you have like new elements. So you can hear something that is not yet there. Which is quite nice when you think about ghosts and when you think about people from the past. Uh, for poetry, we were inspired by, uh, by several things. Um, there's this idea of having several poems read at the same time. So your brain has to decide which one you like the most. And um, for, inst for instance, for this project, we were inspired by uh, Thumbelina, which is um, a fairy tale by Anderson, uh, which features a real girl that is not is as big as your thumb, and we're thinking of proposing to people to get scanned uh, entirely and up there and be 3D printed to the size of their thumb. Uh, for physics, um, Niels Bohr mainly, is mainly known, known for quantums, uh, quantum mechanics and um, the property of waves and particles, so we're thinking of kind of having um, a sound installation with really low frequencies. So you would not hear anything, but you would feel the waves, and you could as well feel some particles, either by fabric or some kind of other material. Um, yeah. And uh, one of the physicians, which I never remember the name of, I think it's Overstadt, something like that. Yeah, thank you. Okay. And is uh, is um, really is uh, one of the he's one of the people who discovered the magnetism. So you could have like a digital compass that would help you find his grave. So that's a new type of magnetism. And philosophy, but we already talked about that, of the no sound and no lines. So thank you very much, and um, see you at our stand.